Hello everyone! I have prepared an activity for you, a springboard for our discussion in this video. And all you need to do is to fill in the missing term and also to identify the rule in each sequence. Are you ready? So let's start with our first sequence. We have here 2, 4, 6, 8, and blank. What do you think is the missing term? What? Okay, very good. That is 10. How did you get 10? What is the rule or what is the pattern? Huh? Okay, the pattern is by adding 2. Well, let's see. 2 plus 2 is equals to 4. 4 plus 2 is equals to 6. And 6 plus 2 is equals to 8. 8 plus 2 is equals to 10. Therefore, the rule is adding 2. So we have here 200, 100, blank, and 25. What do you think is the missing term? What? Okay, the missing term is 50. How did you get 50? By dividing 2. So that's our pattern or rule. Dividing 2. 200 divided by 2, that is 100. 100 divided by 2, that is 50. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So it's correct. Dividing 2. Now let's go to the third sequence. Blank 15, 10, and 5. What is the missing term? Okay, very good. The missing term is 20. Okay, how did you get 20? That is by subtracting 5 from the previous term to get the next term. So let's see. 20 minus 5, that's 15. 15 minus 5, that is 10. 10 minus 5, that is 5. Correct. Come on, bright ba. Okay, now let's have the last but not the least. 2 blank 18 and 54. What do you think is the missing term? Huh? No, it's not. Again, try, think. Okay, correct. That is six. And our rule is by multiplying three. Two times three is six. Six times three is 18. And 18 times three is 50. Four. Okay, very good. Now, my question is, what do you think is the importance of knowing the rule? Let's talk about it in this new learn video. Hello everyone and welcome to my class. This is our third episode for the sequence topic. And in this video, we're going to talk about the importance of having the rule or knowing the pattern of a sequence. Why do you think it is important? But before that, if you haven't watched our first and second episode, you can see it here. And if not, you can visit the description for the link. So going back with our activity a while ago to answer the question why it is important to know the rule or the pattern, do you think can you supply the missing term without knowing the rule? I don't think so. So the rule is very important for us to know the terms or for us to generate the sequence or to create the sequence. Without the rule, there is no sequence it will only be random numbers the rule will dictate the numbers here 
no? So if you have 2 here and your rule is by adding 2, so it is expectedly that the next will be 4. But if you don't have any rule, any number will do. You can have 2, 5, 7, 11, like that, right? So that's how important the rule because it helps create the sequence. Okay, so let's have another example wherein we're really going to generate the pattern or number patterns given the first term and also the rule. So for example, we have here the first term is... <clears throat> Five, and the rule is, or the pattern is, multiplying two. And your task is to generate the six terms, or you're going to find the six term so since you have the first term which is five so you're going to write it first and then the rule is multiplying by two so you're going to multiply five by two so five times two is ten ten times two is twenty twenty times two is forty forty times two is eighty and then are you going to stop now remember your task is to generate the six terms so this is our first our second our third our fourth our fifth so we need six the six terms so what is the six terms that is 160 so now our Six terms are 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, and 160. So that's how you're going to use the rule in generating sequence. But make sure you fulfill the task that is given. So let's try another example. What if... The first term is 1, and our rule is by multiplying 3, and then add 1. And then you're going to generate the 5 terms, or you're going to find the 5 terms. So how are you going to do that? Again, our first term is 1. Then our rule is by multiplying 3. So first you need to do is to multiply 3. And then the result, you're going to add it by 1. And then your task is to generate the 5 terms. So we have the first, second. I'm going to be writing this one so that we would know when to stop. Okay? So our first term is 1. Then the rule is multiplying 3 and then add 1. So, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So, here I will write here, 1 times 3, that is 3, plus 1 is equals to 4. Next, we have now the second term. Now, let's go to third term. So, 4 times 3, that is 12 plus 1 is equals to 13. Now, let's go to the fourth. 13 times 3 is equals to 39, plus 1 is equals to 40. So, our fourth term is 40. Now, let's go to the last term, which is the fifth term. 40 times 3 is equals to 120, plus 1 is 120. One. Okay. 121. So what's the 
five terms if the first term is one and the row is multiplying by three and then add one we have one four thirteen forty and one hundred twenty so what if our given is the second term or last term but which is five and then the rule is to multiply the previous term by two and then subtract one then our task is to find the first or the previous term diba usually in our previous examples we have the first term but now let's have the second term so we are going backwards okay so how are we going to do that so first let us set first term as variable a no we will denote or we will use the variable a to represent the first term and then second step is to create an equation of this problem so since the rule is multiplying the previous term what is the previous term here it's in our task because we are doing backwards and our previous term is a so multiplying previous term by 2 so we can write it this way 2 times a multiplying the previous term by 2 next what are we going to do and then subtract 1 so minus 1 what's the result if you are going to multiply 2 and then subtract 1 the previous term the result will be the second term okay so we now have this equation and our task is to find the value of a which is the previous term so now let's continue I'm gonna copy it here so in solving this our target is to have an a on this side of the equal sign and the other side will be its value so how are we going to come up with a here from this one so first let us combine terms which means all the numbers without letters will go together so as you can see in this side of the equation we have minus one here it's only a number and on the other side we also have five only a number without a variable so how are we going to move this to the other side by doing the addition property but the shortcut is called transposition so we are going to transpose negative one so that they will go together because they are family okay so we move negative one to the other side so when you move since it passes the equal sign the sign of this number will be changed to it's opposite so from negative this now becomes positive if it will move you no know, to the other side of the equal sign huh? remember if a number will move or will cross the equal sign its sign positive or negative will be changed to its opposite so since this is negative then it will become positive so the remaining term here is 2 a is equals to 5 plus 1 it becomes plus because it crosses the equal sign from negative it becomes positive but if it is positive here when it cross the equal sign it becomes also negative so change to its opposite sign and then we have to execute this 2 a is equals to 6 now our target is to have only a here but we have two here so since that is multiplication a here stands for one a and one is invisible so 
we don't have to write it there. So we need to have 1AO by dividing it by 2. So whatever is the number beside the variable, that's the number you're going to divide to both sides of the equation. No? What you do here in this side, you also do it here to the other side. So since you divide it by 2, then you also have to divide this side by 2. So 2 divided by 2, that's become 1, which is invisible. So remaining is A. 6 divided by 2 is equals to 3. So now, we have an answer. Our first term is equal to 3. Okay? So another form of problem in generating sequence or pattern is in this format. Find a sub n given the equation a sub n is equals to 2n plus 1. So let us understand it first. What are you going to find out? That is a sub 10. This means the 10th term. Okay? The 10 here means the position of the term. And the e equation is a sub n is equal to 2n plus 1. a sub n here refers to the nth term. Or the missing term. The term that we are going to look for. So whatever is the value of n here, that will also be the value of the n here. And n refers to the position of the term. Okay? So since we are looking for the third term, the position is 10, then our value of n is equals to 10. Then our task is to find a 10 and the given equation is a sub n is equals to 2n plus 1. So now let's substitute a so our n is 10 since we are looking for the 10th term a 10 is equals to 2 times this is this symbol this parenthesis represents times our value here of n is 10 so it will also be 10 plus 1. So 2 times 10 is equals to 20. Remember, m dash. So multiplication first. Plus 1. So 20 plus 1, that is 21. So therefore, our 10th term or a sub 10 is equals to 21. So do you have any questions? Is, am I clear? I hope you learned something. And at this point, so it's time for you to have self-check. So given the first term is 4, the rule is you're going to subtract first by 1 and then you multiply 3. And your task is to find the 5 terms. Again, first term is 4. Rule is subtract 1 and then multiply 3. Task is 5. Find the 5 terms. I know you're very excited to do this, so comment down your answers below. And for the first 3 who will get the correct answer, I'll be shouting you out in our next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.